Next, we're going to look at meiosis. And meiosis is a process in which we make sperm or egg cells. We're making gametes, all right? And what's important to know about meiosis is that we are going to make four cells, all right? Each cell is going to have half the genetic information that the original cell had, and that each cell is going to be genetically different. That's why all of the offspring that a pair of parents produces are different. That's why you're different than your brother or sister, all right? So keep that in mind as we go through this. We've got four cells that we're making, so we're going to have two sets of divisions rather than just one. And we need to find a way to create some genetic variation. We need to create um, some ways where we're going to produce chromosomes that are different than one another. So stay tuned. We're going to look at that here in just a minute. We're going to head back out to the lab. So uh, again, meiosis, we're making sperm or egg cells. Four cells genetically different with half as much genetic information. Remember that we start off with 46 chromosomes. When we perform meiosis, we get sperm and egg, right? Uh, dad produces sperm, mom produces egg. Each one of these has 23 chromosomes. When they unite during fertilization, we get 46 chromosomes again. That's why there needs to be half as much information, all right? Half as many chromosomes. So we'll look at that and we'll go from there. So let's head to the lab, all right? We'll talk to you later. All right, so here we are back at the lab bench and we're gonna take a look at meiosis today compared to mitosis. Now remember, uh, meiosis is a little bit different. In meiosis, we're gonna form four cells to see. Four cells, instead of just two in mitosis, our cells are going to be genetically different than one another, all right? Um, and they're also going to have half the number of chromosomes that we started with. So we got a lot of work to do here. There's a lot of things that we need to think about when we are do performing meiosis. Uh, also keep in mind that meiosis, you're producing sperm or egg inside of the body, all right? The other cells, all the other cells in the body are made through the process of mitosis, not meiosis. So here we're making sperm and egg. So if we think about it, if we have 46 chromosomes in our body, and at the end of meiosis, we need to have half as many chromosomes, uh, we're gonna have 23, all right? So here you take a look. I have four chromosomes that are present inside of the cell, right? One two, three, they keep wanting to stick together, four. So at the end of meiosis, we should have two chromosomes and each one should have different colors, all right? The process is very similar to that of mitosis. We're gonna have G1, cell continues to grow. We're gonna have S phase where replication occurs. So I'm gonna replicate these bad boys right now. So you see we got a replicated chromosome. Remember, uh, each of these where there's just one of them that is before replication. And when they're paired up like this, this is what they look like after replication, all right? Remember that they are attached to each other at the centromere, which is right here, okay? So we go through the normal phases, uh, G1, S where they uh, replicate, and then G2. And then uh, we undergo the same steps as mitosis. We go through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. The only difference is, is that here, if you remember in mitosis, they lined up single file, right? They lined up single file one at a time. Here, however, they're not gonna line up single file. Remember that the nucleus disappears here. They're going to line up in pairs, right? Remember that chromosomes in the body exist in pairs. We're diploid, so we have pairs of chromosomes. So the pairs are going to line up as opposed to the single chromosome. So we're gonna have pairs of chromosomes line up in the center. Remember, we still have our spindle fibers that are present, all right? And those spindle fibers are going to push and pull those chromosomes. But those pairs of chromosomes are going to line up. And they're going to line up along the metaphase plate. Just like this. Now, you notice there's a little bit of difference here, all right? You can see that there is, uh, there is some definite difference is that they are no longer lined up single file, they're lined up in pairs, they're homologous pairs. So you know that you have uh, two of chromosome number one, two of chromosome number two, all the way down. So instead of having 46 line up in a human cell, we're gonna have 23 pairs line up like this. Each of these is called a tetrad, all right? And what you notice is that there's red on this side and yellow on this side. And it can happen this way or 
it could be like this. This will result in different cells. This will result in different genetics inside of the cell. So each one of these pairs can actually be on either side, all right? That would result in a, a large amount of genetic variation, okay? Something else to consider is the process known as crossing over. And crossing over occurs when they form tetrads in a small piece of DNA can actually be exchanged between the pairs of chromosomes. Okay? Just like this. And that results in genetic variation. So this process is called crossing over. A little piece of DNA can actually switch places. All right? So you see that there is um, quite a bit of genetic variation here now. And the process as we move on is still the same. There's just a lot of important things that occur in metaphase. We have anaphase, where the pairs are going to be pulled apart. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to have anaphase, where these are going to be pulled apart. All right, we have telophase here. And then eventually, those nuclei are going to reform. All right. And we have cytokinesis, all right, where the cell is going to be split right here. So you notice that we've done quite a few things that are different here, all right. We've had crossing over occur, and we also, um, they paired up during metaphase. That's really, really important to understand, all right. Now, this is not done. This is just the first part of meiosis. The second step is actually very similar to that of mitosis. So we're going to have to go through the same steps again, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. The only difference here is that now, all right, the cells are going to go through the same steps, the exact same steps as mitosis. It's almost exactly the same. So, nuclei disappear in prophase. All right, we're going to have spindle fibers form. They're going to line up along the metaphase plate. So we're at metaphase, okay, just like this. So you see how the chromosomes are all lined up. These are your spindle fibers, and they're going to pull each chromosome apart, all right? So you see we're going through two chromosomal divisions here. We're going through two sets of chromosomal divisions, all right? So we've got through prophase, metaphase. This is anaphase, where those chromosomes are being pulled apart. All right, we've gone ahead and moved on to telophase here, all right, where the chromosomes are completely pulled apart. And then we'll go to cytokinesis where each cell is split apart again. The spindle fibers go away. And we've created four new cells, all right? But again, notice we started off with four chromosomes, right? Each cell now has two chromosomes, all right? They're all genetically different. They don't have the same types of beads. Everyone has a different set of beads. Each set of beads looks different as well, all right? So they have half as number of chromosomes, four cells, and they're all genetically different, okay? So again, first part of meiosis, we got prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. The big difference is that in metaphase, they line up in pairs rather than single file. During that uh, during metaphase, all right, crossing over can occur where they're going to exchange some genetic information with each other. They pull apart in pairs, cytokinesis occurs, and then the whole process happens again, all right, um, except the second time they all line up single file. So what we end up with is half the number of chromosomes in each individual cell, and these can be sperm or egg cells, all right? So those are just the brief uh, steps of meiosis. Hope we get a good understanding of this. We'll see you later, guys. Have a good day.